I just sling this over here. Greetings. Got an LGR Blurbs video about uh, the sling box uh, 17 years later. <laughs> so uh, you may have seen the news um, over the past, I don't know, year or so that this thing is going to be killed off. And in fact, I just saw uh, some more headlines go up about it recently because I, you know, the, the time is approaching, but I think they announced this about a year or so ago, year and a half, something like that, I don't know. But it's going offline, or the, uh, the servers and whatnot are going offline, November 9th, 2022. So, I've had this in my storage for a long time, and uh, well, if it's ever going to still work, uh, now would be the time to test it. So, what is the sling box? In case you're not aware, this is a device from 2005, uh, this is the very first one, for one thing. I've ne actually never seen one of these demonstrated on YouTube, so uh, plenty of the later ones, especially the, the 500, and these became more popular later on. <clears throat> but yeah, it is a, a streaming device that allows you to take things that are playing in your house, whether it be live TV or a DVR or DVD players or just whatever. You plug it into this, the sling box slings it across to other devices through your internet connection and it streams it to you. So laptops, <laughs> that's the only thing that they mention here, but there were also uh, apps for PDAs and cell phones and just all kinds of stuff over the years. I think this one, I don't know, this is the very first one, right? So like, <laughs> you can tell. Check out these system requirements. Windows XP, Pentium 4, 256 megs of RAM, 100 megs of hard drive space, a graphics card, 24-bit color, sound card, CD-ROM, Ethernet. This being the very first one, I honestly don't know if it'll even still work, but I figure servers are shutting down. May as well give it a test and at least unbox it. You know, see what it's like to use this thing. I've always been curious. Because, yeah, take whatever. Antenna, cable, satellite, DVR, DVD, or video camera. And then being able to access that anywhere around the world with your devices, as long as you have an internet connection. Pretty crazy at the time. I always thought this was really cool back in the day. Saw a bunch of them over the years for sale. Um, just never picked one up. I don't know. I never felt the need. Honestly, didn't have the money <laughs> when uh, these things were super popular. Well, not super popular, but more popular. Like, around... Uh, 2008 to 2012-ish. Yeah, I just, I didn't have the money to do it back then, but I thought it was really, really cool. So, uh, oh yeah, no monthly fees. That was the other big thing too. So you just buy this thing, it's like 250 bucks or something back in the day. I don't know exactly what this one cost, but um, yeah, in the times before you had everything streaming, this is pretty cool, especially for local live television. So let's see here. I just noticed G4 gave it an award, CNET, Retail Vision. Yeah, new old stock. Let's get going. Oh, oh. got CDs in here. Oh, there we go, look at that. Windows XP. We will definitely be trying it on Windows XP. Again, no clue if this will work. I also have, you know, there, there's their current desktop version, at least for the next few days. Yeah, I, I just don't know what to expect here since this is the very first model. Connect it to, uh, yeah, source network power software. Supposed to be stupidly simple. You know, the fact that you can just connect it to whatever. It's got composite and S-video, RF. I think that's it on this one, uh, pretty much the next year or so they added things like component and HDMI to get HD video, but uh, wow, Rhapsody, haven't heard of that in forever. Number one rated digital music service. Okay, let's see here, what do we got? This weird shaped thing, this first model. Oh, it's so strange. It's like a, like chocolate or something, like, like a candy design. Again, this one didn't even last long in the market. Uh, the design is very, very first gen type of. <laughs> my cable TV, my DVD, my radio, my diva derp. Oh man. man, it has a smell too. Whew. That smells like aging electronics. 
like in a very deep way, almost like a fertilizer smell. <laughs> oh, look at this. Power uh, infrared blaster, that's the other thing. So it has an IR blaster. So you, you plug that in and it's supposed to be able to control like set top boxes, DVD players, that kind of thing. So you can not only watch and stream things that you have at home from anywhere on a laptop, but control it if it's got infrared that it can uh, control, of course. Uh, Ethernet, no Wi-Fi on this one. S-Video out and AV out. So that's the pass-through. So yeah, it's supposed to act as a pass-through connected to your TV. Uh, RF antenna input, S-Video input, and AV input. Those are the main ones. And then got a little reset button, but... Uh... Okay, plenty of cables. So we have our power adapter here. I believe this is the infrared. It's got an ethernet cable. Uh, your standard type of thing here is like, a, you get these with video cameras and whatnot too. But uh, yeah, plugs in and gives you AV. Here's your other one for pass through. And a couple of S, or no, one S video cable and one RF coaxial cable for connecting set top boxes, antennas, whatever. Here's our infrared blaster. Look at that. You're supposed to, I think, adhere this to uh, the top and kind of over wherever the remote connection is on your cable box, satellite box, DVD player, whatever. So yeah, uh, this, is, this is pretty much it. It seems really simple and I'm sure it is or was back in the day. Now the question is, will this still connect to the current servers uh, and will the software even still allow itself to work? on Windows XP? I don't know. Let's hook it up and try it out. Okay, so just as a quick test to uh, see if it'll do anything, I got it plugged in. As soon as you turn it on, plug in the ethernet cable, the ethernet comes on, power comes on, that little and lights up. That seems promising. So just as a quick test, I got it hooked up to a laser disc player here. The output, going to a RetroTINK 5X, just so I can see it on my TV a little better. And then, the, yeah, the input just connected to the output of uh, the LaserDisc player. So composite, uh, or rather RCA audio, S video for video. And I got Back to the Future going on LaserDisc. Because why not? All right, let's see if the software works. Okay, so I have actually tried it uh, with the modern software. It does absolutely nothing. It just says, oh, I can't find a sling box. So uh, that's the only results that I get on the modern software. However, got the Windows XP PC going here, and this is the CD that it came with. Uh, it says as long as the lights are on, it should be good, so. Uh, I don't wanna do updates, I just wanna see if it works as is. So, it, oh, oh, no way! No way, that worked immediately! I wasn't expecting that! <laughs> Dude, he has the laser player upstairs. Oh, dude, this is cool. <laughs> well, I guess now the question would be, will it work over the internet too? Because this is just local network, I guess. So like what you connected directly to the sling box inputs external box. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, video input is S video. What do I have connected? Okay, so this is gonna be setting up the infrared, I assume. So it is a pioneer. I don't actually have the, the infrared plugged in. Well, let me go see if I can get this the rest of this set up. Um, this is super cool already. I wasn't expecting uh, these kind of results this fast. This is awesome. All right, well, I've been messing around with this for a little bit and um, yeah, trying to get the software going and configured and trying it on different systems. It actually does more or less work on modern computers as well, like installing on Windows 10 or 11, um, the old version of the software that it came with. The, uh, the newer ones just refuse to recognize that old sling box no matter what. But this here, I have um, the Asus Lamborghini laptop, the VX2S. I don't know why it's taking a while to load here. There it is. Took a second. Um, but yeah, so I am outside uh, and I am not connected to my home network. I've actually got a wireless hotspot going with my cell phone. And so we are away from my house, but the sling box is back at the house, connected over ethernet to the TV still with the laser disc player still playing Back to the Future. And so um, I have it set up there on, uh, well, I set it up on the Windows XP machine first, but at this point it's fully connected to 
I guess the Slingbox servers. So yeah, it it's just doing what it's doing. So when we have this right here, we can just hit watch and <laughs> yeah, get that manure, Biff. You deserve it. <laughs> so um, the quality is not fantastic. It, it does not seem to get around or over like 400 kbps, uh, at least that I've seen so far. That could be any number of things, but yeah, that, that's the settings that I've been able to uh, get it to work the best at, is this right here. Considering though, that this was meant to be uh, watched on things like PDAs, phones, and laptops. I mean, this is, this is fully manageable. Obviously watching movies or whatever is not gonna be, <laughs> this is not an optimal way to watch movies, but you could. Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of like what they most advertised it for, having things like, oh man, you just wanna tune into the local sports game or something like that, or the news or whatever when you're away from home. This is ideal for that. Uh, the audio is not bad. Like it actually does quite good. Yeah. And there are of course settings that you can change around in here. So let me see. Uh, we have it stretching to fit the window. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, here we go. So some of these encoding things, yeah, it's just on the medium, middle, middle of the road, neutral sort of settings. Low action and high action are the other settings, I guess, for what type of content you're watching. We put it on a high action. I think that's, I think that's like the highest setting or it's sort of it's supposed to optimize it for certain types of movement, I think. So high actions for sports or whatever, or movies i guess i don't know it doesn't really seem to change much of anything in terms of the speeds or the video quality audio quality i've noticed really no difference switching between those but if you want to uh, you can get very specific with manual adjustments too so you can change the I don't know, let's just put it up to like 3000 or something or like uh yeah, yeah let's just do that and we'll do video smoothness and we'll put that all the way up too <laughs> oh can't so 1400 kbps is the max. Let's just do that. Okay, well that gets us a little bit higher. Um, yeah, again, I think we're just limited based on uh, the hardware and the encoding of not only the sling box, but like what this is capable of and you know, the, the computer itself, the software, everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can see this is getting really choppy when you, when you just let it go all over the place. So, uh oh Well, that seems to have frozen it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not the most stable software. Um, I've had a crash on all three machines I've tested it on, but uh, when it works, it works pretty darn well. It eventually catches back up. But uh, yeah, I usually just have to close it down, open it back up again. And it also will not let you have more than one of them going at once. It'll be like, oh, there's another user connected to this sling box. So you can only have one stream going to one device at once. Um, of course, you can watch locally, you know, back at home, I could, and have this going. Uh, but no, you can't have uh, multiple streams going. Uh, it does actually also say, I saw a note in one of the bits of software in here where it was like, um, do not use it with game consoles. I don't know why. Exactly. You certainly could, uh, but obviously you're not going to be able to control it, you know, remotely. Uh, and you're going to get terrible lag. Like there's like, oh gosh, I don't even know how much lag between the stream back there at the house and then this. Oh, and on that note, in terms of controlling stuff, you are supposed to be able to uh, get the infrared going. I tried. You have this control mode that you can go into here. Oh, it's gonna go nuts. Control mode. You're now watching TV in control mode. Um, yeah, supposedly this eliminates or you know slows down the lag. That's supposed to uh, help, like if you're navigating menus or whatever in a DVD. 
That being said, I was never able to get the infrared to work with the Pioneer uh, laser disc player that I have. <laughs> Just no surprise. I mean, it only had a couple of settings for different Pioneer devices. I tried every single one of them. It wasn't able to get any kind of um, anything. No response. But yeah, I have no doubt that it would work with, um, you know, more readily supported devices, set-top boxes, and uh, different DVRs, DVD players, things of that nature that it officially supports. Not a Laserdisc player. <laughs> Dude, this is so cool. It's so cool. I'm really glad that this still works. And, uh, you know, it sucks that the servers are going down. That being said, even though this right here is going to be going away, like this ability to watch things over the internet, it still seems to work even when it's not connected to the internet. Like if it's just uh, on the LAN, so I guess maybe you're still going to be able to watch things over Ethernet, which is no big deal. I mean, you can get video over Ethernet, do that kind of thing without a device like this. Uh, but yeah, in terms of getting things online as I'm doing now, this is going away in a few days and that sucks. So let me go ahead and just turn off the Wi-Fi on my phone just to sort of show that uh, it's real. Uh, there it goes, turned it off. And I think we, yep, lost the signal. So that is the, uh, the Sling Box, the original one from 2005, and the Sling Player application. It's, a, it's incredibly simple. It's not made for recording or anything. I mean, you could use some other software to do recording, I guess, but it's really only made for playing back. And um, yeah, the ability to play this on laptops, cell phones, PDAs, or whatever supported devices back in the day would have been extremely cool. And uh, rest in peace. One quick addendum uh, from the future in the editing bay here. Yeah, well, I guess the past now. What I, you know what I mean? Uh, I was just putting this last finishing touches on uh, this blurb and Steve Mac84. We got to chatting, and it turns out he was doing a video on this as well. And he actually got it going on a Palm Pilot. So check out his video if you'd like to see a slightly later model. It's a couple years later, but. Yeah, the same basic idea, just working in a different way. He also happened to use a laser disc player to test it, which I thought was kind of funny that we did not plan that. Uh, but yeah, and in the process of uh, talking about that, he was able to send me some files he found that may get this working on an HP iPack. I'm going to try a pocket PC with Windows Mobile. I have that. I got to find it out of storage. If I can get to that in time, I'll try that too. and have another quick blur, but I just want to see it work. But in the meantime, uh, his videos there, so uh, check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching this sling blurb.